Hey everybody, this is Mike Deal. I'm your instructor for AIT 2702. Uh, just thought I'd make a tutorial video prior to you coming to your first lab. Uh, it might give you a little heads up on what you're going to be working with, make things a little bit more clear and a little more understandable uh, when you come into the lab. A lot of you haven't ever worked with a robot before, never touched one, really even seen one that much. So hopefully this video will make it a little easier for you. Uh, it'll kind of be a good segue between what you studied in the, in the lesson and also what you're going to be doing here in the lab. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, we're going to use a FANUC LR uh, made 200 IC robot. It's a six axis articulated robot. Now what we mean by articulated robot is that it has joints that move, okay? And there are some pick and place robots that pick things up, set them down, and this is the only track that they'll do, okay? The only motions and movements they'll ever do. But with an articulated robot, it, can, it has a lot of joint movement. Uh, <clears throat> it can get in a lot of different places that uh, a pick and place can't. So uh, that's what we mean when we say articulated, okay? Uh, it's controlled by an R30IA controller. Don't worry about the, the model number. But this is the, the uh, controller for the FANUC robot. It, uh, it tells the robot where to go, how fast to go, uh, all the, any motions and any uh, activity that the robot uh, has to do is carried out by the controller. Also, there is a teach pen that you're going to become very familiar with. Okay, That's, That <clears throat> allows you to write the code for the, uh, for the program, also make any moves, make any touch-ups or adjustments or edits to the program, create programs that can get downloaded into the uh, controller itself. And finally, on our, uh, on our robot, we have a small air compressor that uses uh, air to control the pneumatic jaws that open and close on the robot. But anyway, those are basically the four components of our robot. Okay, now, we said it was a six-axis articulated robot. By the axis, we mean the, the joints that move, okay? First of all, each joint or each axis is controlled by a servo motor. It's a little bit different from a three-phase induction motor that some of you may have uh, studied in my motor control class, okay? The controller sends a signal out to the uh, servo motor. It also tells it how fast it has to go, uh, how fast it's going to ramp up, how fast it's going to ramp down. And also, there's an encoder on it. That can keep that can tell the controller what position the arm you know, that particular axis is at at any given moment. Okay, so if it tells us to go to a certain position, there's an incremental value that you know go to and stop. So that's how it's controlled. But just kind of once you get an idea, so I'm not too worried about that. But the three major axes are uh, the are, are based on the 3D Cartesian coordinate system. A lot of you had this in geometry in high school or maybe college, but you have an X, Y, and a Z. Okay, and everything is referenced off. A point of origin. If we go up one meter and, and the, vertically on the z-axis, it's one meter from that point of origin. If we go out one meter uh, or left or right from one meter, it's always based off this point of origin. And that origin is set up on the frame of the, ro of the robot itself. We're not going to get too much into that in this first lab, but I just kind of want to give you an idea of how we, when we tell it to go somewhere, how it knows how to go there. Okay, But it's a <clears throat> basically a point in space uh, based on your, your coordinates here, your X, Y, and your Z, you know, this point right here will have a three-point coordinate here, a three, two, and a five, based on this grid here. This is sort of a simple grid, like, like I said, uh, like I said uh, from uh, geometry class or something like that. But that's where it's born, it's born off of this point of origin right here, okay? And the three major axes, axis number one. This is the one down here. <clears throat> it's, I, I kind of like it, I liken it to swiveling your hips, okay? It's your left and your right motion, all right? Then your axis number two, which is your Y axis. The first one being X, the second one being Y. The Y axis is a lot like you bending over, bending your back a little bit like that, okay? And you can go in and out like, like that. And then finally, axis number three is, is a lot like bringing your shoulder in and out, okay? All right, those are your three major axes, okay? And that can follow the right hand rule. What do I mean by right hand rule? Okay. If you take your finger and hold it like this, take your hand like this, and you point your fingers like I'm doing here, okay? It's almost like holding a gun, okay? I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, <clears throat> trigger finger right here, I've got the hammer right here, and I've got this, uh, actually this is more like the barrel, this is more like the hammer, and this is more like the trigger finger. Okay, so if we take and hold them like this, our middle finger is gonna be the Y axis, okay? And you may even wanna mark on your fingers or wrap some tape around them just to you get it down in your head, okay? The uh, index finger is going to be your x-axis, moving it in and out, and the, the thumb in, in the vertical position is going to be your z-axis. Now, the direction that these fingers are pointing will tell you which way the robot is going to move uh, in a positive position. 
Okay, so if um, I'm going to want to move the, uh, the robot to my left, it's going to be a positive Y. And moving it outward, it's going to be a positive X. And moving it upward, it's going to be a positive Z. You're going to get a lot more familiar with this when you get into the lab. I'm just kind of giving you a heads up on here. But to try to get your head and holding this out, your fingers like this, okay, based on the origin of the robot. Now, this can change. I can move this 80, 90 degrees, and suddenly everything has changed. Now, coming back toward me, it's going to be what used to be uh, Y axis is going to be our X axis. So it can change with the origin here. You're going to get a lot more familiar with that. But I just want to give you a, hand, a heads up on what the right hand rule is, okay? Now, <clears throat> again, uh, we, um, these are based on the, the index fingers, the middle finger, and the thumb and it gives you the positive direction. Okay, now we're gonna move into the minor axis. Okay, these are the, this is sort of almost like your arm, you might say. Okay, you got an, an axis that'll rotate this way, you got your wrist action like this, and then you got your ability to rotate your wrist like that. Those are your three axes. The X, Y, and the Z. They're in the lower case, that's what differentiation from a major axis, okay? And they rotate around the major axis. For example, okay. You have our z-axis right here, which is one of our major axes, okay? So if I'm rotating, if I'm rotating around that axis, okay, that, ax that, that, uh, that particular uh, axis is gonna rotate around the z. That's what we call our yaw, okay? Now, all three of them can have uh, rotation around those major axis. The one here for the y, it's gonna be like pitching. It's gonna roll over this axis, and then the x-axis is going to be like a barrel roll, kind of like this. Now, sounds a little bit like uh, aviation. Uh, you got your roll, your roll pitch and yaw, okay? So if you can picture an airplane, for example, this would be our z-axis going up here. So if an airplane starts to do this in this direction, that's called yaw, okay? And then if you start to rotate on this axis, we start to pitch, the airplane starts to pitch on this axis. Okay, and finally on the longitudinal axis, which would going to be our x-axis, okay, it'll start sort of doing like a barrel roll. Okay, so the minor axis rotate around the, the major axis. Okay, again, it's kind of hard to describe here on the video. You're going to see it when you get live in front of the, in front of the robot. But again, I'm just going to give you some heads up on this stuff. Okay, so the major axis positions are, are points somewhere out in space that are relative to the point of origin. Okay? And your minor axis positions are relative to the rotation of the major axis. Okay? So here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to move the, the robot. I'm going to step over here in just a second and turn it on real quick. And uh, <coughs> going to get, let, let's start getting uh, booted up. So we're going to move the axis with the pendant. Okay? This is our pendant. All right? So it looks, this is exactly the one that we uh, have on the robot itself. There's two things that you got to do when you first start. Okay, first of all, you have to turn the pendant on right there. There's an on and an off. You've got to make sure it's on. And then we've got to make sure that the controller, T1, uh, or T2, excuse me, is in the, uh, in the uh, teach position, the T position over here, and not in auto. So if you've got the pendant on and you've got the controller in T2, then you're going to be able to control it with the uh, pendant. Okay? All right, and also one thing we gotta make sure to do, to do is that the e-stop is not pushed on either the controller or the pendant itself, all right? So, another thing about this, I'm gonna grab the pendant real quick. <coughs> okay. All right, so we have three position dead man switch right here. On the back, I have two of them, okay? You only need to worry about working with one. Okay, they've got another one in case you're left-handed or the other one in case you're right-handed. It's three position, okay? Open meaning no contact, okay? I'm not touching them at all, okay? And then you got the middle position, and then you got the, the final position squeezed all the way in as hard as you can. That's the panic mode. They built those things so that if, you're, if you accidentally drop the pendant, the robot stops because you don't want to have it running and no one have actual control of it, okay? Now, if you got squeezed halfway in the intermediate position, that's where you can teach it, that's where you can make, the, make it jog, you can make it make motions, you can actually make it run a program in manual mode, or the teach mode, I should say. And, but, if you see a robot coming at you and you panic and you squeeze it into that third position, that's, this, that will fault you as well. It's almost like dropping it, same as dropping it. So the only way you're gonna be able to actually work with this is if you got at least one of the uh, dead men switches pulled in the intermediate position, okay? 
So this is our this is our screen. I, I put this up here on the screen because it's a little bit easier to see. But you, first, the second step you're going to have to do is we're going to reset the uh, faults on this. Okay. So in order to do that, first of all, you look up here on top of the screen. You can see this little red box on the pendant. You probably can't see it real well on this actual pendant, but on the screen, it's faulted right there. All right. So when we clear that fault, is we press our shift button right there, and there's my thumb right there. Okay. And then we hit the reset button, which is right here. You also have two shift buttons. Uh, again, if you're left-handed or right-handed, uh, you can use it which one is making you the most comfortable. Okay, so if you hit shift and reset right after that, while you're squeezing the, there we go, while we're squeezing the dead man switch halfway through, and then the red goes away, it turns green, and your fault has been reset. Okay? All right. So at that point, from this point here, we're going to make some moves. All right? Now, each axis has its own uh, set of software limits, okay? And what we can do here is simply t uh, determine which axis you want to move. In this case, I'm going to move the X axis. And I'll speed it up just a little bit so you can see it. Okay, and again, there's my right hand rule. Index finger is my X axis. And if I put X plus, it's going to make the robot move that way, so I'm going to hit X plus here on this. And then I'm holding the shift key and the dead man switch at the same time. So my X plus, look there. Okay, it's following my right hand rule. Now, my middle finger tells me that the uh, Y axis uh, positive move is going to go that way. So I'm going to hit Y positive, and certainly it does. And I'm going to take it back to Y negative. Each axis has a positive and negative, obviously. Okay, so to make it move the opposite direction, we're going to make it like that and then here's our Z. We go down with the Z negative and here's the Z positive. Alright. Here's our minor axis. Notice the roll there that we got going on with that uh, first minor axis. Okay. And then we're using right here this, this is our pitch. Our pitch axis. And then finally we're rotating around that Z axis. Okay. The Z is my thumb. And that, that uh, actuator with the clamp there is rotating around that one. Okay. Now, um, a couple other things you can do. You, <coughs> this, uh, if, you, if I were to be running this, uh, run the robot, and I let go of my uh, dead man switch, it goes into fault mode. Okay. So you got to make sure you keep that pressed at all times. Okay. Also, if you run it too far in one direction, they have software limits that keep it from colliding with something. In this case, we have this plexiglass case, so we have the software limit set where it won't hit the plexiglass, okay? And in order to reset that, now it's faulted out because it's, it's, uh, it's gone too far and hit its limit, its internal software limit, we're gonna do a reset, or we're just gonna head it back the other direction, okay? There we go. Clear it, and it's back there ready to run it, okay? One other thing that you can do, is control the speed as, as well. Okay, the speed is up here in the left-hand corner. It tells you what percentage of the full speed it will be able to run at, you know, or it's running at at the time. So right here it's set at 10 percent. But you can change that by simply pressing the uh, plus uh, percentage plus and the percentage minus. That allows you to change the speed. Okay, and again, holding the shift key uh, will allow you to change it by up to 50 percent. Okay. So if I hold the shift key, it goes from 100 to 50% down to zero. Okay. If I'll just hit the speed key and uh, with no shift, it's going to do it in 5% increments. But again, uh, this is just kind of a, a little intro video that I hope has helped you uh, get a little bit more familiar with what we're trying to do in the first lab. Like, like again, the first lab is not programming. It's all about getting familiar with it, what the axes are. Again, remember, work on your right hand rule so you can kind of understand because when you start programming in some tight spaces, you're going to want to make sure you know which way is positive and negative and which way that axis is going to actually uh, move. So, again, I hope this video has been helpful. Uh, if you've got any questions, be sure to email me um, or stop by the lab. If you're having trouble in the lab or you need to understand something, grab me. I'll be glad to come out there and we'll work with you together, okay? Other than that, uh, good luck in the class. Thanks.